So this one's called the Rape of Nanking. <coughs> I was six when I first saw my grandfather cry. Grandpa, why are you crying? I asked, six years old, careless and naive. I'm not, he said, wiping his eyes on his sleeve. I'm leaking. Grandpa, why are you leaking? I asked, six years old, na six years old naive and wondering. Grandpa shuddered, as if some unseen wind had blown into the room and chilled him to the very bone. Then he looked at me with his face of fire and his eyes set in stone. Let me tell you a story, he said, of the rape of Nanking. I was six years old when I first saw my grandfather cry. Sitting outside our burned-out mud brick house, he held his daughter in his arms, he held my mother in his arms, he cried and cried and sat and cried. The year was 1937, and I still remember that day. It was a rainy day. I was playing soccer with my friends when the farmers came running into town screaming, The Japanese are coming! The Japanese are coming! Nanking went into a panic, only to discover that while night provided cover, the Japanese had surrounded our town. Ten thousand Imperial soldiers stood at our gates, and we knew we would not have long to wait before hell itself descended down, and then they came. Hundreds and thousands of yellow-faced demons with rifles and bayonets as they came. Men and women screaming and running, children running and screaming. Father put me in a fishing basket and told me not to come out for anyone. And this is what I saw. The men, they shot. Rifle barrels hot. The bullets came hotter and faster than our Chinese legs could run. I saw my father go down from the sting of a gun, and as his son, I wanted to jump out of that basket and go to him. My father told me not to come out for anyone. The children they murdered. Knives flashing, blades slashing and hacking as boys and girls that I had played with, stayed with, ran with, laughed with, and mowed down like the grain in the harvest. And as they fell, I wanted to jump out of the basket and go to them. Father told me not to come out for anyone. The old folk, they tortured. I cringed as I smelt the smell of skin being singed as they held the torches to our elders and forced them to bow. Then with long pointed spears they... Shit. Then with long pointed spears they cut at their... They pulled in the hair and cut out their ears. I didn't know where Grandpa was. I wanted to jump out of that basket and find out. My father told me not to come out for anyone. The women, they raped. Mothers screaming and pleading as they were dragged dirty and bleeding onto the streets where every Japanese soldier was given his own personal Chinese geisha. And though the crying and the shrieking overpowered my own weeping, I knew that somewhere, my mother was out there, somewhere. I wanted to jump out of that basket and go to her and be her protecting son. But father had told me not to come out for anyone. And that's why his eyes still glisten. Because 71 years ago, my grandfather listened. And that's why I am here right now, because grandpa knew that somehow being spared death needed to make his life worthwhile. And that's why once in a while it's worth my while to be around people who have been around for a while because I learn about myself. And that's why sometimes when I'm alone, studying away from home, I can still see that day in my proverbial mind's eye as I see the sounds of men and women dying, children and babies crying, knives flashing, blades flashing, guns blazing, hell raising itself. Bombs exploding, faith eroding, faith eroding killing, slaying, hoping, praying that this is all just a bad dream. And that's why I... Keep yearning and learning about this so that I know more about this and I know why the ground gen she was still stained with the blood of a million innocent slain and I know why my grandfather cries when it rains and I know why his face is so wrinkled with pain and I know why my grandmother is deeply ashamed and I know why Japanese blood runs through these veins and I know what to do so that Nanking will never happen again. <laughs>